morning. Thank you for joining me for practice and as always please practice according to your condition and also ensure that you respect your limitations and honor any um, any injuries that you have so please please um, practice safely and um, mindfully. Thank you so much for joining. Let's begin seating, sitting up straight and tall. Let's take a moment to imagine what existed before creation. Before creation, beyond creation, and everywhere, everywhere in between. There was, is, and always will be God. The supreme self that resides deep in the hearts of all beings everywhere. Give the sound of Om to attract God's divine attention. Om. Fix your mind on God alone. your thoughts in God alone. Oh. And in God you will live hereafter. Of this there is no doubt. May all beings everywhere be happy and free from suffering and enjoy this practice through our senses. May we acquire a strong desire for liberation from pain and suffering. And may we cherish no ill feelings against each other. Only peace, love, joy, and compassion. So let's begin with the Om Namah Shivaya mantra, which means I bow to the inner light. Calm response. center, feet together, close the eyes, we'll begin with a mantra for purification, to purify the space, the grounds, and all the psychic channels within. So if you know the mantra, of course, sing it along. If not, just think about those benefits of purification and how they manifest, and you derive all the benefits as though you were chanting the words perfectly. Three times. Each time, do it loud enough so it can be heard by both the gross and the subtle bodies within. 
Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sawa Vashtanga Topi Wa Yaha Smrit Pandrika Ksham Savaya Vyantra Ha Saji Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sawa Vashtanga Topi Wa Yaha Smrit Pandrika Ksham Savaya Vyantra Ha Saji Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sawa Vashtanga Topi Wa Yaha Smrit Pandrika Ksham Savaya Vihantra Ha Saji Release the arms, charge up the body with the earth's energy. Feet about 10 inches apart, raise your arms above the head. So, we inhale from the soles feet right up to the fingertips. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hold all the attention of the breath at the fingertips. Two, three, four, five, six. Exhale all the way back down throughout the body. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, use your attention to pull the earth's energy right up to the fingertips. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Holding at the fingertips, hold the breath. Two, Exhale, return the breath all the way back down. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Last time. Feel your synergy rising up through the body, charging you up. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Holding it all at the fingertips, hold the breath. Exhale all the way back down. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Feel fully charged. Bring the arms down now and we'll continue with some exercises to prepare the body for the practice. Pretend now that you're the witness watching the body moving all by itself. Stand with your head, um, start with your hands on your hips, circle the head around. Try to see the floor in all directions as the head goes around. Bringing the ears to the shoulders, the chin to the chest back of the head to the top of the back. And then switch the direction rotation. Make sure you're not going too fast so as not to get too dizzy. Always move mindfully according to your condition. Good. And from here, just start to swing the arms as you Turn the body from side to side. Feel as though your arms are big, heavy ropes slapping the body. Try to see all the way around and behind you. And maybe it's going to go faster. So, get to move the shoulders a little bit more, move the body. And fly in all the directions. And then start to slow it down again feeling very heavy and eventually coming back to stillness. Now take your left foot forward, the right foot back, standing with your knees slightly bent. I'm going to imagine you have a weight held of five pound weight in your right hand and circle backwards four times. And then switch directions for four and switch again backwards. Feel as though you're being wound up. And then the other leg in front and then start with your left arm going backwards and then switch forward again up and backwards and then forward and release take all the opposite elbows over the head squeeze the ears with the arms go to the left Go to the right, back to the left. We try to stretch the side body, the upside body without wrinkling the underside. Coming back up, go back. Press hips forward, go forward. Come all the way up and back. Forward, you can just go as the height that you want. You can even go all the way down. And then coming back up, and then from
from here, Kapalabhati, so breathing, so just exhale as you go from side to side. The inhale um, uh, is passive, it happens automatically. Shaking water off the hands. And then up and down. Good. Take the arms out to the side now, high to the shoulders, and swing the right leg back and forth. If you need to, you can place the left hand on the wall or something nearby, a chair, and then just swing the right leg back and forth. Try to bring the knee right to the shoulder, bend the knee forward, but then we go back. Love head to go back, arch the back a little bit. Feels like you're trying to kick yourself in the head from behind. And then the other arm, I mean, other leg, sorry. to hang loose, jump up and down, make sure that the heels leave the ground. Of course, if you have any knee issues, you can just stay just bouncing, but if you can, jump as high as you can. Go around in circles, be like a child, enjoy it, go the other way. Good. The left foot, right foot, Left foot again in circles, and right foot in circles, and release. Good. So now that we're warmed up, come to the front of the mat. We'll continue with some sun salutations. Hands to the heart. Remember, knowledge is better than practice. Meditation is better than knowledge. Renunciation of the fruits of action is better than meditation. Peace immediately follows such renunciation. Keep these words in the Bhagavad Gita, firmly engraved in your mind. Pretend or imagine that this is your divine duty to all beings every, to all beings everywhere. So let's start moving together as imagine moving together with all beings everywhere to deliver benefits to all. Raise your arms up over the head, hips forward, arch back if you feel comfortable. And bring your hands down to the ground. Bend your knees if you need to bring hands flat on the ground. Right foot back into lunge. Sink down to the seat. Lift the chest. Bring the head up. Come into high plank. Lower down the knees and bring the seat all the way back behind the heels. Glide forward between the arms smoothly. Come into cobra. Shoulders back. Lift the head. Come all the way back. The seat behind the heels. Come forward again. Pull with your arms. Push the elbows out to the side. Propel yourself forward more. Power and ease. Come all the way back. One more time, brush your nose to the ground as you come forward. And pull the body up, stretch the front of the body. Roll over your toes, back into Adho Savanasana, not the heart. And then the right foot steps forward to the hands. If you had trouble doing that, lower the knee. If the foot doesn't come down, uh, come forward uh, all the way, just use your hand to assist it forward. Then bring the left foot to meet the right foot, chest on the sides, head down. Come all the way up to standing, reach up and back. Hands back to the heart. Don't worry about the breath, just move the body in a way that feels intuitive to move with the breath. And then allow, try to keep the breath steady and even, left foot back. Then watch the body move more steadiness and fluidity. Knees down, the seat all the way back. Come forward, into your cobra. Shoulders back, all the way back. Once again, glide forward. Keep the lower back and the back neck if possible, free of wrinkles as you move. And all the way back once again, come forward. Into the cobra, roll over your toes, lift the seat up and back, downward facing dog. Left foot steps forward to the hand. Try to place the foot quietly and gently so as not to distract the witness who's watching. Pull the body down onto your legs. Come all the way up to standing. Stretch the front of the body. 
Return the hands to the heart. Reach up again. Go down. Feel as though you're doing a dance. Link the movements together seamlessly. Right foot back into a lunge. Sit down through the seat. Come into high plank. Knees, chest, forehead down. Ashtanga Namaskara. Come forward into your cobra. Back into Adho Mukha Savanasana. Move gracefully always. Right foot forward. Bring the feet back together. Fold the body down onto your legs. Come all the way up. Hands back to the heart. And again, feel as though you're a shapeshifter moving between the forms with ease, with fluidity. And see the grace and divine beauty in all forms, all reflections of God. Knees, chest, forehead down, different manifestations. Celebrate all those different divine qualities of God. All the way back into downward facing dog. Left foot steps forward between the hands. Sit down to the seats. Bring the feet back together. Make as though you're bowing humbly. Head down. Come all the way up to standing. Arch back. Return home. Hands to the heart. Let's add on. Arms up over the head. Pull the hips forward. And come all the way down. Uttanasana. Chest on the sides and the belly on the sides. Join the hands behind the back. Extend through the crown. And then dive down, push the body into your legs to try to straighten your legs a little bit more and bring the hands way beyond your head in front. Stretch, lift the seat to feel a stretch in the backs of the legs. Good. Now release the hands, bring the right foot back, lower the knee, flatten out the toes. Kapiyasana, bring your arms up over the head, make like a crescent moon shape. Reach back, pull the body up by the hips. And then circle the hands down, plant the hands, press into your hands. Swing the left leg all the way up and back. Ekapada Adho Mukha Savanasana. Come forward into your high plank. Keep your leg up if you can. Then lower your chest down by bending your elbows. But if you need to, lower your knee down at the same time as the chest is coming down. The toes come to meet together. Come up into Cobra. Back into Downward Facing Dog. Right leg comes all the way up and back again. And then step the foot between your hands. Move your shoulders forward. Over your fingertips so you can place a foot lightly. Flatten out the toes. Again, drop the hips down. Raise your arms over the head. Arch back. And bring the hands back down. Bring the left foot in to meet the right. Belly on your thighs again. Join the hands. Extend to the crown. Again, Uttanasana. Bow down humbly. And then release the hands. Come all the way up to standing. Hips forward. Stretch the whole front of the body. Come back to Pranamasana. Reach up again, lift the heart, come forward and down into Uttanasana. Every movement reflecting devotion and surrender. Chest on the thighs, hands behind the back, extend to the crown, and pull the body right down against the legs if you can. Straighten the legs all the way. And then release the hands, left foot back, lower the knee down, sink down to the seat. Arms up over the head, stretch the front of the body. Circle the hands down, plant the hands, and then swing the right leg up and back as you come into downward facing dog and three legged dog. Come forward, shoulders over the fingertips again, lower the chest down, make the modification that you need to. Come up into cobra, back into downward facing dog, lift the seat up and back. Left leg comes up and back, and move your Body forward, shoulders over the fingertips, place the left foot down softly. Back knee down, sink to the seat. Kapiyasana, bring your arms up over the head, circle the hands down. Plant the hands and slide the right foot into meet the left. Again, belly joins with the legs, join the hands behind the back, and Uttanasana, dive down. Release the hands, come all the way up, arch back. Hands back to the heart. Keep watching the body moving all by itself. Raise your arms over the head. Yet another variation. Be open and receptive to all experiences. Pull the body down into Uttanasana. Hands beside your feet a little bit in front. Inhale, lift the chest. Shoulders over the fingertips. Press into your hands. And if you can, jump back. Or if you, or if you want, just walk back. Come onto your belly or chaturanga hovering just above the ground. Swing up into Upward Facing Dog. If you need to, you can keep your hips on the ground. 
then pull your shoulders back, pulse a little bit, try to get your hips a little bit further forward, your head back. Make sure you don't lose your neck, don't jam up your neck between your shoulders and your ears. Feel like a dog howling at the moon. Try to become one with the form. Imagine yourself in the, that being's body, whatever you're representing. Roll over your toes, Adho Mukha Savanasana. Here, try to form a nice curve behind your head. Try to drop your chest towards the ground. Flatten up the arms a little bit, belly comes towards the thighs. Arch your back, think of the dog stretching its back and try to imitate the dog. Copy it physically and mentally if you can. Be loyal like the dog to its master. And now lift the heels, bend the knees up between the hands. Hop or walk forward. Pull the body down onto your legs, Uttanasana. Come all the way up to standing. Reach up and back. Hands back to the heart. One more time. Arms up over the head. Go down. Create space wherever possible. Lengthen and be nice and open in the chest. Inhale, come up. And then bring back into Chaturanga, hopping and walking, or onto your belly completely. Come up into your cobra or upward facing dog. Now from here, tuck your chin in, round your back. Roll over your toes back into downward facing dog, not the heart. And then just shift, transition between these two poses. Rounding your back to come forward, then uncoiling into upward facing dog. Tuck your chin in, round the back. And then when you arrive in downward facing dog, sink the heart. One more time, roll over your toes, tuck the tail, round up the back, and then uncoil, arch, pull the shoulders back. And then all the way back into downward facing dog. Stay in downward facing dog for a moment, breathe in, breathe out. You're trying to create space as much as possible in your body so as to um, come closer to your true nature, which is formless, which is infinite. Lift up the heels, bend the knees with between your hands. Bring your feet forward softly, hopping or walking. Pull the body down onto your legs. Come all the way up to standing. Arch back, hips forward. Bring the hands back to the heart. Take pause here for a moment. Breathe in from the heart up to the space between the eyebrows. Exhale back down to the heart, always coming back to that connection that we find with God who resides within the spiritual heart. Release the arms and let's go into some balancing poses. So we'll try a few sequences here. Let's start off with ballet pose. Bring the right knee up and take hold of the heel from the inside. The thumb is behind the heel. Now if you can, Extend the leg and the arms at the same time. Try to get the toes and the fingertips at the same height. So some of us might look like this. If your toes and um, fingers at about the height of the shoulders, you're more flexible. Pull the leg up close to the shoulder. Lean a little bit to the left so that your fingers still stay at the same height. If you're having trouble with this pose, you can just take hold of the knee or underneath the leg. Just do what you can. It's the effort that counts fall out of it, be unconcerned and unjudging. Just come right back up. Good, now from here, engage your leg muscles. See if you can release the foot without dropping the foot appreciably. Good, now pull the foot down carefully without touching the ground if possible. And dive forward, coming into gliding eagle. If you need to, you can take your fingertips on the ground with the index fingers. Gonna you know, try to get your head about the height of the knee, and then you can spread your wings again. Feel like an eagle diving down from a great height at fast, fast speed. And then push into your foot, come back up. Let's go into angel from here. Keep your foot up again if you can. If you're having trouble bouncing, keep your toe on the ground. And then push your chest forward, bring your arms back. And then see if you can tip your head back. Again, in expression of complete abject surrender and devotion. Break the pose. And 
and try it on the other side. Press down into the right foot, lift the left knee up, take hold of the heel from the inside, make your way into the pose. Imagine you're a dancer, the star performer in the show. Exude grace and poise. Magnificent. Magnificent. And again, engage leg muscles so that when you let go of the foot, if you want to let go of the foot, it doesn't drop. Now, pull the leg down again with control. Tip forward. If you can, go right into gliding eagle or place your index fingers on the ground for a moment to find a balance. Pull the left leg up as high as you can behind you. Curve the body. Then from here, press into the right foot. Come up again. Keep your leg lifted if you can. Spread your wings again. Oh, fingers to height to the shoulder. Push your chest forward. Get a sense of body flight. And bring your head back. Offer up every pose. Make it a divine expression of love. Say, take me on yours, grant me even higher devotion. Break the pose, come back. So we'll try another one here. Move to the back of the mat. Take your left wrist with your right hand, bouncing T-pose. Take your left foot forward, hinge at the hips, bring your head about the height of the hips. Bend the left leg and bring the right leg up. Try not to open up the right hip, keep your hips square. Okay, so if you need to, bring your fingertips on the ground first. Try to feel as though you're lying on the table, stretched out, like the capital letter T. And then interlace your fingers, bend the wrists. Try to pull the hands over the head, raise the right leg up. We just did a very similar pose with gliding eagle, just an extension of this. Try to bring your chest forward, curve your spine. And release the hands, drop the left fingertips down to the ground, turn to the right, out of Chandrasana, right arm up, and then raise the right leg up again, higher. Turn to the side, shoulders, hips stacked on top of one another. Then if you like, you can bend the knee, take hold of the foot, pull the foot away from the seat. Feels like you're doing a Dandrasana, bow pose. Open up through the chest, look over your right shoulder. Good. If you have good balance, you can look down, keep your left hip high, right over the heel, and bring your left hand to your chest, to your heart. Break the pose. Left hand comes back down, right foot down, and step back. Try the other side now. Watch the body moving gracefully. Take hold of the right wrist with your left hand. Step your left foot forward, sorry, right foot forward, and go down. Make your way into balance and teeth pose first. Foot and the head roughly at the same height. Try not to let the left leg straight up to the side too much. Keep it close to the midline so you don't uh, encourage hook, opening the hip. Good. Now from here, interlace your fingers if you like. Bend the wrists, so your hands 90 degrees to the arms. Pull the left leg up a little bit higher. Bring your chest forward. Arch the back. Get the left leg up as high as you can, higher than the head, at least. Release the hands. Bring the right fingertips on the ground in front of the left, right foot. About uh, 8 inches to 12 inches, turn to the left, Adha Chandrasana. Left arm comes up, left leg comes up higher. Again. Option to bend the knee, take hold of the foot. Just again, move according to condition. Don't feel like you have to do every pose. Go where you find your comfortable edge. Keep 
always coming to your edge so that you keep on redefining it every time you surpass it. This is how you make progress. Keep trying. Look forward and down, right hip over the right heel. If you want, you can take your hand to your heart. And then release. Bring the left foot back down and step back out gracefully. Good, now come to the middle of the mat. Face the long edge of the mat. Bring your fingertips in line with your elbows and then jump your feet apart, coming like a star shape. Go to your left, bend your left knee, sink down to the seat. Come into consciousness of this mighty warrior. Shoulders down, but exude confidence. Gaze over the front finger. Reflect a divine purpose, protecting all those that you serve. Now swing the right leg, arm forward, come into Virabhadrasana 1, trying to turn your chips, uh, your chips, your chest, hips forward, arms up, bring the head behind your arms. If you need to, if it's too hard for your hips, you can just lift your back heel. This is an option as well. Lift up, stretch it up. And then lower the back knee down, sink down to the seat. Just totally hold your opposite elbows. And here, just push the back of the head into your arms. Try to open up a little bit more. Sink your seat down as far as you can towards the front heel so you don't feel as much pressure on the back knee. Open up through the front of the body. From here, if you feel comfortable, you can now join your hands together. Arms stay close to your head so that the arms don't bend. Try not to. Um, try to think of a shape of a crescent moon. Try to imitate that shape with your body. Allows you more flexible, have good balance. If your seat is low, you might be able to bring your back foot up. Again, if you bend your elbows, your hands might eventually find your foot. And then just place it on the head. This is for advanced practitioners. Other options, take your fingertips down to the ground. Even if your foot doesn't come up all the way, just try to pull your foot towards your head. Imagine you're squeezing a sock behind your knee. If you drop your head back again, maybe your foot will eventually make contact with the head. And then break the pose, bring the back foot down if it was raised, lift up through the heart, then bring your hands to the inside of the left foot. So now just knees on the ground and just try to sink down to the seat. Imagine doing a cobra pose, anchor down to the front of the hips. Try to keep your left knee close to the shoulder. Then roll to the right, right forearm comes down perhaps, roll to the left, left forearm comes down. If it's too much, just stay on your hands. Otherwise, telescope your chest forward more and more. And the more you do it, the more you lengthen, the more the body comes closer to the ground, eventually right on the ground. If your chest is on or close to the ground, left hand can come to the outside. I'm going to do this way so you can see. If you want to take a bind, if you're flat on your chest, left arm comes around the outside, so it's underneath the knee. Make sure you hips on the ground for this one, and then right hand goes over the back, and just hold the wrist with your left hand. Now be still like a lizard. Gaze unblinkingly forward. Copy each form mentally and physically again. Just cultivate a divine appreciation and love for all beings, seeing their virtues by being one with them. Now, break the pose. Come back onto your hands if you're on the forearms. Climb your way up so that your legs are like a box. So if I do it this way, see the 90 degree angle. Bend the toes under on the right foot. Right arm comes up. You can take your hand to the outside of the knee. The hand can either come to the hip or on your seat. Inhale, push the chest up. Exhale, turn over to look over your left shoulder. If you want, lean back. Take your left hand to the outside of the heel. Now push the knee and the foot towards the left as uh, towards the right as you turn towards the left. Now, if you want to go further, you can go. Come back forward, right arm up. 
bring the elbow down to the outside of the thigh. Get your armpit right on the outside of the knee. Hands in onto the mudra or fist, left fist and right hand. Push down into your hands, the bottom hand, so your belly lifts up. And then start to turn towards the left. Try to bring your center of the chest towards your hands or your thumbs, depending on where you're, what your hands are doing. You want to take a bind, pull your hips back, use the left hand to guide the arm underneath. So if your hand is underneath your belly, throw the left arm over your back and try to hold it from underneath with your other hand. Extend through the crown, extend through the, uh, and the, the seat at the same time, the tailbone. If you like, push into the base of the toes and lift the back knee up. All different progressions go to what is suitable for you. Keep trying to move deeper. If you don't make any effort, as Dharma says, you'll be in the same place 20 years later. Push up through the heel, extend through the crown. Try to feel as though you're lying right on your back. Now from here, release, bring your hands back down, bring your seats back, so you have options here. You can just slide your left foot back, come right into side plank, if you need to, you lower down on your knee to modify. Or you can, from here, you can bend it, um, take hold of the big toe, the two piece fingers and your thumb, watch around the toe, and you come right up, turn your left foot, the right foot at 45 degrees, Make sure the base of the big toe is down. You can also just take the knee if you don't have the foot, it's not in reach. Make sure you push your hips up. Left, right arm stays strong, don't drop into the shoulder. And then from here, return gracefully back into downward facing dog. Breathe in, breathe out, soften. Then walk the right foot back between your hands, spin on your feet, face along the edge of the mat, and come back up. So if you're facing the wrong way, like not away, away from the camera, just jump 180 degrees. So I'm going to do it to just to show, but I'm facing obviously the wrong way when I do it. Like that. Okay, so now go to the right. Right leg in front, sit down to the seat. Healthy to form, you imagine that's that that is your teacher. They will connect psych, you will connect psychically with them and they'll show you all your their tricks. Swing your left arm forward, come up into Virabhadrasana one. Head back, can lift the heel if you need to. Turn more onto the base of the toes. If it's too much for your hip. Straight line, right out from the base spine to the fingertips. From here, lower the knee down, flatten up the toes, make sure the foot's straight, on the same lines of back, rest the leg, take all your opposite elbows, and again, open up through the chest, push the head into the arms to work the shoulders a little bit, open them up. Hips forward, right close to the front seat, uh, front heel, and extend your arms if you like. Kapyasana. Reflect the light of the sun, just like the moon, reflect your inner sun, the light of all beings. You are everyone's mirror and they are yours. Again, if you want to take, try to take the foot up, if you can, imagine you're squeezing a sock behind your knee again, bend your arms, you might be able to, the toes might find the head eventually, or fingertips on the ground if it's too much, to try to hold your balance. Break the pose, coming back upright, and then go to the left, with um, roll to the left a little bit so you can get your left forearm down. Move the right foot out a little bit further towards the edge of the mat. Try to keep your knee to the shoulder. And go down through the hips. If it's too much, you just stay on your hands. Okay, so just gauge how you feel. And then if you roll to the right, get the right form down. Keep telescoping the chest forward. Try to get your chest right on the ground. 
In any case, try to have your knee higher than the back, the rest of the back. Even if your body's not completely down, just try as much as possible. Stick down through the hips. Again, take whatever expression you like. You can take a bind again if you like. Right arm underneath the leg. Passing underneath the leg from the outside. And then join your hands over your back. Left hand holds. The left hand is held by the wrist, is held by the right hand. And being a lizard, sunning itself on the warm earth. No cares, no worries. And then release. Push into your hands, come back up. Move the right foot in a little bit further so your legs are like a box. Left arm comes up. Take it to the outside of the knee. Right hand on the hip or on the seat. Lift up to the chest, look all the way behind you. Not only the eyes turn, the whole body turns. From the, the, the waist all the way up. And then lean back if you like. Try to take your right hand to the left to the left heel. Pushing your knee and your foot towards the left as you turn towards the right. And again, if you want to go deeper, Padivita Pashvakanasana. Come back forward, lift the left arm up. Anchor the leg in place with the back of the left arm. Armpit is right against the knee. Hands again, Anjali Mudra or right fist near left hand. Try to get your body higher than the thigh so you have more room to spin. Face and chest turned up. Take your bind if you like. If you can, right arm over the back, left arm underneath the leg. And then lift the back knee up as well if you can. Don't worry about the results. Don't worry about all the gunas, all the forces that are affecting you at any given time, shifting you from into different states of mind and body and physical. Just dance with them, as the Dharma says. Be unconcerned and unjudging. Now release. Hands back on the ground. Again, make your way into Vasisthasana. Lower the left knee if you need to. Come into modified or press into your hand. Tuck your left foot underneath the right. Can bring your right foot in front. Feel as though you're being a kite blown from behind. If you want to go further, go ahead. Slide your left toes back. Push your hips up. Try to get your hips as high as possible. Make sure your left foot is at 45 degrees and flat on the ground, including the inside of the foot, especially the big toe. Take your knee up if you have steadiness. All the way to your left hand and left foot, maybe the foot as well. Keep your arms strong, don't drop into the shoulder. Return to have a facing dog. Breathe in, breathe out. Bring your right foot again between the hands, spin on your feet. Face the long edge of the mat, take the arms out to the side and come all the way up. Good. So now I'm going to turn sideways so you can see, but you can stay where you are. Turn your heels in a little bit. Walk your feet in a little bit so that your feet are about the width of the mat. The toes are beyond the edges of the mat. Take your hands to the seat, push into the seat, and then bend your knees, come forward, your knees come beyond your toes. Push your hips forward, your chest up, and your head back. You can stay here if you like, or slide one hand at a time down just below the knees. So you have firm grip on your legs and have control on the movement of the legs. Then roll the thighs outwards, roll the shins in at the same time. Your thumbs come further through between. Then push your hips forward and up to straighten the legs. But keep that outward roll of the thighs and the inward roll of the shins. If you want, so you might be able to walk your hands all the way back, all the way down to the feet. Step on your fingers if you like with your heels. Making your way up carefully. So walk your hands back up the backs of the legs. Push into the seat, pull down at the same time. Then come back up. So hinge at the hips, turn your heels out a little bit so the feet are parallel. Hinge forward, coming flat back. And then bring your hands down onto the ground, Prasadita Padottanasana. 
So a few options here. You can slide your hands back behind the heels. Try to make try to get your arms at a 90 degree angle. See if you can get your head to the ground. From here, those of you who are steady can come right up into your headstand if you like. Straddle up your legs, those of you know how to do it. Legs can come up. Hold it for about 10 seconds, come down. I'm just going to do it quickly. For all others who are not coming up, just stay in the pose. You can take all the outer angles if you like, or step if you can on your fingers with the outer edges of the feet. Try to pull your body right between your legs and try to get your chest behind your legs. Shoulders up so you don't jam up the neck. Those of you in headstand, if you're still up, come back down softly. And then from here, come all the way back up. Arms up to the side and come up. Let's do one more back bend. Easy to krasana. You can move your feet in a little bit, your heels back in. Plant your hands on the seat, push in and down at the same time. Pull the tail under and then go back. If you bend your knees more, maybe your head comes close to the ground. If you have your hands on the backs of the knees, your head's close to the ground, you can see it clearly. You can see if you come into Urdhva Dhanirasana from here. Again, only if you're comfortable, take your right hand up and over your head and see if you can take your fingertips to the ground and then just the other hand will come down easily. Hips forward. Straighten your legs if you can. Now to come back, if you're in Urdhva Dhanirasana, you reverse it. Bring the right hand back onto the back of the knee. Push into the back of the knee with your hand, heel your palm. Let your hips stay forward and stay, and your legs stay strong, and then your other hand. And then from here, just keep pressing your way back up one at a time. Onto the seat eventually. Bring your arms back out, and then jump your feet together. Fingertips together again, elbows up to the side. And then bring your hands down. Standing tall like a mountain in Tadasana, close your eyes. Inhale from the heart up to the space between the eyebrows. Exhale back down to the heart. Once again, feel as though you're baby. breathing at your mountain, breathing in from the base right up to the summit. And back down. Feel fully immersed entrenched in your practice and your devotion to the practice remain unshakable and unmovable like a mountain now let's come down for some inverted poses if you know how to get to headstand please go ahead now either on your you can do this version make sure you can take hold of your opposite elbows interlace your fingers or if you want to come onto your fingertips and your head down so go ahead if you know how to get to headstand all, all others follow me for some options. If you're very um, uncomfortable coming up too high, just keep your forehead on the ground from the knees, hands beside your feet, and lift up your hips. Try to get your hips over your knees. If you feel too much pressure on the back of the neck, just move your head forward. So you're on the top of the head, close your eyes, and bring your attention to the space between your eyebrows. Stay there. If you're more comfortable, can bring your hands, fingertips, I like having your fingertips on the ground, you have a lot of power. Beside your knees, a little bit, nice wide base towards the edges of the mat. Lift up your seat, walk your feet towards you, and then you can do one of two things. You can just lift your seat, try to bring your knees, turn your elbows in, you can bring um, just underneath the knees against the elbows, and then see if you can dance from one toe to the other. Okay, so just tap the ground, and then eventually you might be able to just flick your toes up and you're off the ground. You can stay steady here. Eventually you can bring your knees, your feet up towards the seat. Okay, so you can do that version or split your legs, one leg behind, one leg in front. Again, keep your front foot on the ground, close to where, to, so you just, again, tap your toe to the ground until you feel the balance to just keep your toes hovering up off the ground. Eventually you want to push you the back foot a little bit more so that you can come up higher so your feet are dangling at the height of the hips. Don't jump. Do everything under control. Always make sure you can see your foot moving slowly. 
too much pressure for your head. Go to your headstand, you can go into lotus or other variations if you like. Make your mind one pointed. Bring your attention to the space in your eyebrows. If you want to take the form balance, uh, not the balance of your forms in your head, that's a little bit maybe more steady for some. Make sure you can hold your opposite elbows easily. Don't let them go wider than that. Anchor down to the arms, interlace your fingers, and place the head between your palms. Again, you do the same thing. You bring your leg back behind you. Push through the foot. Keep it close to the seat. If you allow your leg to go up too high, it introduces a little bit more imbalance. Keep your foot close to your body so you can control it better. Again, just tap the toe against the ground. Try to eventually find the steadiness. Just keep your foot hovering off the ground. Push into your arms, push through the back foot. Again, work at trying to get your legs at the same height. Wherever you are, just try to leave the body alone now. Concentrate on the space between the eyebrows. down and rest in child's pose so if you're just beginning don't feel you have to hold the pose the whole time sometimes you get tired and then everything goes downhill from there so just come up try it out and come back down and then just keep trying just eventually you'll build up the endurance and stay up okay, so it's better just come out sooner than to just force yourself and be uncomfortable the whole time and unsteady and in a state of anxiety Think of what you're transmitting. Everybody experiencing this through your body, so ensure the best experience possible. No pain, no anxiety, no suffering. And come back up. Come onto your back. Shoulder stand. Some of us find it a little bit easier. Some of us, sometimes it's a little bit easier to get a little bit of momentum to roll back. So I'll just demonstrate here if you want to try it. So just sit and then swing up, keep your knees bent, your knees are just close to your shoulders and keep your hands to your back. And then just scoot your elbows in a little bit closer. Maybe your hips will come up over your shoulders. Keep your hands on your lower back and you can raise one or both legs at a time or just press your knees up. Try to get your hips forward and then eventually straight up. You can stay with your knees, of course, close to your forehead or your shoulders if you need to. Do according to your condition. Just go to a state where you can leave the body by itself and concentrate on the space between the eyebrows. This is a queen of the postures, all the same benefits as a headstand, plus you're stimulating a thyroid gland as well and a parathyroid gland. If you have a lotus, go ahead. The lotus always makes a pose more powerful and encourages the mind to become one-pointed. If you're able to take your hands onto your thighs, go ahead. You have to be right on the top of your shoulders. Push your hips forward. Try to find a straight line from your knees or your feet down to your chin. Visualize. An ohm symbol sitting right between your eyebrows, a darkness there. A golden symbol of ohm. Feel the sounds of the ohm resonate through you. And match it. It contains all the sounds and colors and vibrations of the universe. Keep your attention on the ohm and the sounds within come into your plow or if you have a lotus, pindasana. Bring your thighs against your body. If you can, wrap your arms around the outside of the legs and join your hands underneath your feet. Otherwise, come into plow pose if you don't have a lotus. Option to drop your knees down beside your, alongside, um, against your body and your knees on either side of the head. Flexible, the knees might come right down to the shoulders, maybe you can touch the ground. 
You want to go deeper. Bring your arms over your backs, your knees. And then cup your ears with your hands, your palms just closing off the ears and listen to the inner sounds. Feel, try to listen to the ocean sound that produces. back into fish pose. So if you have a lotus, keep your lotus and come down. Otherwise, join your hands, with your index finger and your thumbs touching onto, behind your back. Roll down slowly, your legs stay close to your body. This applies if you do, if you have your lotus as well. Bring your legs down. From here, if your legs are straight, just push into your arms, lift your chest. Bring the top of the head to touch the ground behind. Uh, just um, try to get your chest as high as possible. If you have a lotus, you would try to lift your chest up. Push into your forearms, lift your elbows, uh, lift your chest up, head down, and then take hold of your feet. Pull on your toes. Try to get your knees and your elbows to come down right to the ground. Feel as though you're beaming love out of your heart. Everything stops. Feel like you're frozen in time. For those of you who are strong, uh, those of you who want to come into Ordva Dhanivasana, go ahead. Some of you might actually be able to do it from the lotus. Otherwise, just release your lotus and come onto your, uh, bring your feet close to your seat and come up. Bring your hands on either side of the head. I'll just demonstrate the lotus quickly. Version, if I can, my knees might slip out. Bring your head and your head, hands closer and press up. Or take hold of the edges of the mat. Sometimes that's easier. Okay, if you're doing a regular lotus, uh, Danirasana, bring your feet close to your seat. Bring your fingertips on either side of the head. Lift your seat. Flip your hands around, fingers facing the toes, a little bit to the outside as well. And if you can, take a half breath in and lift your head up off the ground. All these, again, options. Stay in your fish if you'd prefer. Just stay a little bit longer. Rock a little bit if you're in Urdhva Dhanurasana. Push your chest forward in front of your arms, lift off your heels. And then come down if you're in Urva Dhanirasana. Lie on your back. Rest. Breathe in. Exhale. Feel as though you're fainting. Let go of all fatigue. Arms over the head. Come up to seated position. Go from here. We're going to come into um, start preparing for Karmasana. So pull your knees in a little bit closer, your toes, soles, your feet facing forward. Slip your arms underneath your legs and take hold of the outer edges of the feet here and see if you can bring your head down. Let's do this one to start. Round your back, feel like your back's like a big tortoise shell. Bring all your attention to the base of the spine. Feel all the blood rushing there. Stimulating that area and washing that area out. Now you can stay here. If you have the flexibility, you bring your knees up close to the shoulders. Your arms have to be way underneath your legs for this. And then you can bring your hands back to side, facing back, to side your hips, close to hips, and start to slide your heels out. Those of you who want to go to Kramasana. Your legs are close to the shoulders, the weights of the legs come down on the arms to make your body descend. Eventually the belly might come right down and your chin down. If your elbows are free, you can join your hands over your back. Lengthen your breath cycle. Long
longer breath cycle promotes longevity of life. Think of a toilet that lives a long, long time. here. I'm just going to um, keep the left knee bent a little bit, take hold the right ankle, lower yourself onto the back, bring your knee to the shoulder, and then pull on the foot so the leg comes closer to your head. If you're very flexible, you can slide your left foot out straight so your left leg's flat on the ground. You might allow your left leg, your right leg to slip out a little bit to the outside, right against the arm, uh, the armpit. Your knees in the armpits and your foot comes just beside your head, behind your head a little bit. You do this variation if you've got no restrictions to your hamstrings. Now bend the knee coming back into half happy baby pose so your heel is directly over the back of the knee. You can slide your left foot in a little bit, raise it up even, and try to get your right shoulder in front of the knee. Now keep pushing actively into the back of the shoulder. Try to get your knee higher, um, higher than the shoulder and close to the ear. Take your head up, push your left foot, uh, right foot further behind your head and tug on it. Go to the left, take it to the left, bring your head and shoulders up off the mat. You might be able to get the head in front of your leg and the foot wedge behind your, your head. Okay, so if you find your way to the pose, just again, take your attention back to the breathing from the heart to the space between your eyebrows. So you want to go into the full pose. If you can get both feet crossed behind your head, go ahead. Cross your ankles, pull the ankles far away behind you and then tuck your chin in and then see if you can get your legs behind your head. Again, this is for those who are able to do it, okay? Who have, know that they can do it. Otherwise, if you're in a full pose, stay there. Otherwise, change legs. So just do it with me. Your right foot can slide in, your left foot comes up, hold the ankle, bring the knee onto the shoulder. Tug on the foot, try to get it closer to your head. If this is okay, you can drive the right heel forward so the leg flats on the ground. And then from here, see if you can take your foot, if you're very flexible, Try to take it right to the ground beside your head, a little bit behind the head. Your knee again is in the armpit. And keep extending through that right heel at the same time. Moving into half happy baby pose. Bend the leg again, the left leg, heels over the back of the knee. Slide your right foot in, lift it up, and try to get your left shoulder in front of the knee. So, Shift to the right a little bit, rock to the right. Get your left shoulder in behind the knee and push it up. Knee comes as high as you can. Lift your shoulders up the mat, lift your head. Pull the foot, push the foot back towards the ground, behind your head, and pull the foot towards the right. And then eventually maybe the foot will land behind your head. Always mindfully, don't strain, don't force. Be mindful of your limitations. Don't hurt yourself. Your vehicle is what you use to carry out your mission of spreading love. So be kind to it. Exercise compassion towards yourself. Break the pose. Come back into Shavasana for a moment. Breathe in. Breathe out. Come up to seat it. Come on to your belly. Just rest your forehead on your hands, stack the hands one top of the other, and just move your hips around a little bit. Let's start off with Cobra. Hold the out of the front edge of the mat. Keep your arms, forearms anchored down and lift your chest. This is where you want to stop. You stay there. If you can, lift the elbows up off the ground, curve the spine. 
bring your head back, feel as though you're making a C-shape letter C with your, with your body. And then if you can, you can walk your hands closer and closer. So try to get your toes together, at least your feet together, eventually, and then lift up, bring your head towards the seat. Go deeper, come onto your fingertips. Try to push them right close to the hip. Your whole body, like just from the tops the, where the legs join onto the hips, is up off the ground. Get as high as possible. If you want to try King Cobra, open up your legs, bend your legs, point your toes. Eventually, maybe the toes will find the head. You can have to imagine you're squeezing socks behind your knees. You can flatten your hands if your feet touch the head. Break the pose, come down, relax. And then breathe out. Push into your hands, come right up into seat position, and then lift up off your seat, stand on your knees. So those of you who are, uh, you can start with your, your knees apart, your heels up, so bend the toes under, hands on the seat, you can stay here, push your hips forward, this is where you reach your maximum, stay, otherwise lean back, so you can take your right hand to your right heel, left hand to left heel, interlock your index, your baby fingers together, push your hips forward, bring your head back, rabbit pose, feels like you're about to fall on your thighs. If you feel you can, you can release your, uh, your baby fingers, open up your heels a little bit more. Lean back and flatten your feet one at a time on the ground. Camel. Push your chest forward, bring your head back. And then come back. Place your hands on your seat. Press into your seat, pull down at the same time, come up into child's pose, knees together, belly on your thighs. Breathe in, breathe out. Come back up, one more round, either rabbit or camel. If you're more flexible, you can go further. You can take your arms up, bend your elbows back, like bring your finger, the index fingers together, or you can take one arm even, one hand. Keep your hands strong, push on the elbow, Lean back, stretch out your arm, see if your fingers fall on the ground. So you have to keep your fingers strong so when they touch the ground, they don't collapse underneath you and hurt your fingers. Okay, so, so I like to have my hands together sometimes. Press your palms together, then you go back, lean back, lengthen, and your fingers find the ground together a little bit stronger. And then you can have your hands on the ground, you can eventually bring your head onto the ground. Those who are more flexible can crawl your fingers back towards your feet, find your toes. Eventually, you can have your hands on your heels, very flexible. If you're very flexible, your face comes between your feet, elbows on the ground. Kapodasana. Thank you, Rabbit Pose. You can either just place your hands beside your head, walk your hands further out, and just come down onto your back, slide out. Uh, if you have more strength, push off your fingertips, lean with your hips, and come back up. Again, you can either rest on your back, depending where you are, or in child's pose, if you came back up, breathe in, breathe out. Seated position. So from here, your legs are extended and your right leg goes over the left. Your foot is somewhere between your knee and your ankle, not too close, not right this, uh, not against the thigh, against the lower leg. You do this way. Both sides seat grounded, right hand right down the center of the back, right against the back, left arm up, go to the right. Push your arm against the leg. With the outer thigh, inhale, lift to the chest, exhale, turn. Again, try to feel this 
twist starting at the base of the spine. Moving all the way up, eventually the chin comes over your shoulder. You try to pull the knee beyond the left edge of the body. Free your abdomen. Those you want to try can come into side crawl or kundinyasana. So from here, keep your left leg where it is. Plant your left hand beside the right. Slide your left foot in a little bit. And then from here, you have to lift your seat. Come forward. Your right elbow can sit against the body, against the hips. And then lean forward, you can bring your right ear on the ground and lift up. From here, you can extend your left leg back like that. If you can do it without your head on the ground, go ahead. Just for those who want to try. The Dharma says, not important. Switch legs now. Right leg extends, left leg goes to the outside of the right shin. Left hand behind the back, right arm up. Go to the outside of the left thigh. Inhale, push the lower back up and in. Turn to the left. Make sure you're not leaning back. Keep your back straight and vertical. Right leg stays active. Find your beauty in all the poses, all the divine qualities of those beings that you're representing. Again, if you want to try the arm balance, keep your right knee where it is, bring your left hand down, but then scooch your right foot in a little bit, your extended leg in, and then lift, push into your hands, lift your seat, allow your left elbow to sit against your hip, the inside of the hip, and then bring your left side of the head down. And from here, you can keep the legs like this, or extend, kick your left foot forward, and then bring the right leg up. Then here, if you keep pressing into your arm, you can eventually lift your head up off the ground as well. Break the pose. Come into seated position. Now doing the main breathing, alternate nostril breathing. We'll do three, 12, six counts. Inhale for three, hold for 12, and exhale for six. During the hold, the breath retention, contract the perineum, pull it up towards the navel. Imagine pulling pelvic floor up. Lift the chest as much as you can during the inhale. When you hold, you bring your chin against the chest. You don't have to hunch your back, keep your back straight. Your chin comes onto your chest, the tongue behind your teeth, the upper palate to seal off the lock even more. Attention to the third eye. Left hand in Yana Mudra, second finger and thumb tips connected like a circle. Other three fingers extended on your left knee, right hand, second and third fingers fold down to the palm. This is Vishnu Mudra. Turn the palm towards you. It now becomes the mudra that we use for pranayama. The right thumb for the right nostril, the right ring finger for the left. So I will guide you through this. You inhale it through the left, hold in a breath, exhale through the right, inhale through the right, hold, and out through the left. Actually, I Correct myself, it's actually the active nostril. So first, block off the right nostril using the right thumb, breathe through the left a few times, and then block off the left nostril with the right, uh, with the right ring finger, and then breathe through the right. Whichever side is more open is your active nostril. Default to the left if they feel the same. For me, it's the left that, nostril that's active. So I'll guide you through it. Sit up tall and straight now. Bring the hand close to the face to prepare. Exhale completely. Release all the breath on the next exhale. Then close off the right side. Inhale to the left. Three, hold the breath. Close both sides of the nose. Again, chin on the chest, third eye attention, and contract the glute muscles. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Exhale through the right side, release the locks and your root in your throat. Four, five, six. Inhale through the right side as fully as you can for three. Hold the breath again, plug both sides of the nose. Throw it to the root lock, third eye attention. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Exhale through the left side, as the active side, two. Inhale through the active side. Three, hold the breath, contract the glute muscles. And the throat, both 
ですが Exhale to the left side to side, release the locks. Inhale to the last active side. Two, three, hold the breath for 12 counts. Keep all your attention at the third eye, the, the seat to divine perception to attract all the prana there. Last one together. Inhale through the active side. Hold for 12. Strong lock at the boat to throat and the root. Third eye attention. Very steady. Exhale through the less active side. Release the locks. Three. Empty out completely. Five, six. Inhale through the less active side. Very fully as you can. Hold for 12 counts. Release through the active side for six. Continue on your own. Keep the three, 12, six rhythm. Keep on being a witness, watching your body go through the exercises. Watching with unconditional love for what you see, for you are merged with a divine consciousness with God. There's no one without the other. Out of your active side, conclude. Take your time, don't rush, complete the cycle. you're done, lie on the back. Make your way down gently. No jerks, no aggressive movements. Always softly. Again, to not disturb the mindset, just calm. Deep relaxation is the best anecdote for relieving the more you surrender to it, the more receptive you make yourself to all the incoming benefits that you've earned through the sharing of your own practice, the offering of your, the fruits of your practice. So make ready for that now. Turn all your attention to the left foot, so allow it to just go limp, the toes, big toe, second third, fourth, and fifth toe, all go limp. Bottom of the foot, the heel, soft. No hardness whatsoever, no tightness. Same with the top of the foot. 
relaxed. The ankle completely loose, foot just dangling off of it lifelessly, just falling out to the left. The lower leg, heavy. All the muscles disengaged, released with all the strength taken out, the leg feels extremely heavy. And the knee joint inactive, no sensations coming from the knee joint. Left thigh, heavy as well. Sinking down into the earth due to its weight. The right foot from the big toe down to the little toe toes in between, second, third, and fourth, all relaxed. On the foot soft, the heel as well, the top of the foot relaxed, no tension, no tightness. The ankle joint, loose as can be, the foot just dangling off of it and just falling out to the right, completely dead leg. The lower leg, all the muscles released, feel as though the muscles just dissolved. The muscles just the mass of tissue just hanging off the bone, no, serving no useful purpose, just dead weight. The knee no sensations, completely still and inactive. And the upper leg, the thigh, heavy. All the muscles released. The whole pelvis now, sinking down like an anchor, sinks down to the bottom of the leg. So heavy from the hips all the way down to the feet, unable to move. wrist loose, the hand hanging off of it flimsily, and all the way up through the arm, the lower arm first, relax, all the muscles there, allow it to go limp, the elbow completely without feeling any sensation, and the upper arm heavy as well, all the way up to the shoulder shoulder just a mass of bones just sitting there keeping the arm anchored in place where it is heavy as well the right hand same thing thumb index third fourth and fifth finger all just falling or drooping lifelessly off the hand the back of the hand Still on the earth, heavy, the palm, soft, relaxed. The wrist completely loose. The lower arm, all the muscles dissolved, the softness. So the arm, the muscles feel like jello. The lower arm feels heavy, as does the upper arm just sends a signal right through so that the whole arm eventually becomes like dead weight, lifeless, and right up to the shoulder. Just holding the arm in place, it as well is heavy, no tension, no tightness, no strain. From the upper back, right at the top of the back, all the way down the back, feel it sinking down into the ground. So melting into the earth, heavy as can be. So a big lead blanket resting on the inside of the body, weighing it down. The abdomen 
soft, this no tightness, no discomfort, the chest just floating up, light, giving. This line of breath pass in and out easily, but very, very softly, so the breath is just barely there. As for the organs, suggest them to relax. Feel vessels that are filled with fluid became heavy and sluggish. They can no longer function. And they too just sink along with the back down towards the earth, into the earth. Forehead smooth, no wrinkles, no signs of tension, nor around the eyes. The eyes are soft, just gazing blankly at the back of the eyelids from inside. No hardness there, no tightness, no pressure. The nose, the cheeks, soft. The area around the mouth, soft. No pursing, no tension in the jaw or clenching of the teeth. incessant chatter that's going on within the brain due to all the activity, all the thoughts racing around, all the managing of the body. Always humming with activity. So just call on that brain to just come into silent mode. So you're shutting it down. Like the mainframe computer. Just close it down. nature, which is formless, which is infinite. This boundlessness capacity to hold and to cultivate love and wisdom, potentiality, courage, all these virtues. We're all the same, we're all one. All reflections of the Divine One, God. Merge with God now, be one with God. And as a result, be one with all beings. gently prepare to come back into your body. Once again, bring your consciousness back to your physical form, your vehicle to help you to carry out your mission, spreading love and divine knowledge.
give spiritual knowledge to others to help others on their path. Whatever you can share in any small movement or act of kindness, don't uh, miss out on that chance to offer up any chance you get. So come now back to a seated position. Make your way up slowly, gently, and silently back into a seated position. and supreme now. Make an intention of adhering to the practice, adhering very importantly, most importantly to the ethical rules. This will keep you in that place of just bringing about favors, favorable circumstances, favorable karma. Do acts that you always act in a way that doesn't incur pain or suffering. Just do your best. Keep that intention ingrained in your heart and mind as we close the practice and carry that out into the world. Thank you so very much for joining. Have a wonderful day. Hopefully next week, I think I'm back to the normal schedule Saturday at 8.30. Thank you so much for your understanding. Have a wonderful day.